Another day, another Warhammer game to review, but this time there's a twist. It's from the 90s. With the classic graphics and run and gun gameplay from an era long gone, what we've got here is a true boomer shooter of the modern age. And for one reason or another, I can't help but feel a little out of touch. Mac Cheese to host, and tonight we're reviewing Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun. In Bolt Gun, Planet Gryia, seen from earlier Warhammer game Space Marine, makes a return here. The result of rogue tech priests' experiments with an unwieldy power device causes the warp rift to open, and the forces of chaos once again swarm. Now you play as Malum Cato, a stern guard veteran who must fight through the invasion to retrieve the power source on his lonesome, because his drop pod to the planet's surface gets severely damaged, leaving him as the sole survivor. Imagine being a veteran space marine, surviving for emperor knows how many battles, and dying in a drop pod. That's just embarrassing. Of course, the story takes a backseat to the rest of the game. For most of it, you're given a vague description of what you're doing and why, and then you're sent off to resume your warpath. The first thing that most will notice of the game is its graphics, a very retro look with 3D environments and models combined with 2D sprites. The art direction here is extraordinary. People who enjoy retro graphics, either for the appeal or nostalgia, will undoubtedly get a kick out of them, but it can still look good to someone who doesn't really care about that kind of stuff. You can even adjust the game's visuals to look more like a low-poly shooter. While none of the maps really stand out or are that memorable, the environments and scenery are done very well here. The game does a great job of exploring the many aspects aspects of the Imperium, from snowy terrain, hive cities, factories, and things like that. You really wouldn't expect it from the graphics, but when it comes to capturing the feel of 40k, it's one of the better games out there. The combat of the game is easily its best aspect, though. The game gives you a wide variety of weapons, enemies, and environments to fight them in. In the weapons category, you're given a variety of them for whatever may come up during the game. The bolt gun remains prominent throughout, able to handle most weak and mid-strength enemies. The heavy bolter is good for unleashing sustained firepower at your foes, the chainsword is a great way to finish off enemies, the melted gun is a great close range option for stronger enemies, and the grab cannon is the most powerful weapon in the game, often reserved for dealing massive amounts of damage to boss types. But there's also a shotgun, plasma gun, vengeance launcher, and volkite caliber, each providing a standout purpose in the player's arsenal. Enemies also host tons of variety. You have your weaker enemies, such as cultists, which are often slain by a single bolt around or blast of the shotgun. These are immensely satisfying to mow down. There are stronger enemies, such as chaos space marines or terminators that require a bit more effort to take down, weakening them with a few pot shots before closing in with a chainsword. Then there are enemies that are a little more threatening that can take and dish out a lot more punishment. These require a bit of a change of strategy to take out, like the Chaos Aspirant, which can be easily defeated until they return to the battle as a Chaos Champion. It gives relentless chase, turning into a sizable threat if not dealt with immediately. A lot of fun from the game comes from learning the enemy's capabilities and handling them as they come about, making it much more than a generic run and gunner. No matter what, the combat is usually pretty satisfying. Time to kill is often reasonable, and enemies turn to mounds of blood and gore as you mow them down. As a mainstream game reviewer would put it, it really makes you feel like a space marine. The maps also provide a lot of maneuverability and verticality, making the game much more engaging as you hop ledges, lunge towards enemies, and weave through shots. Maps are essentially a series of arenas for the player to maneuver through, offering new avenues for tearing apart your enemies. Now, whether or not a space marine would be running around like some sort of sweat lord on your typical coward duty match is up for debate, but I can't deny that there's something to love about running and bouncing around the map, executing any Xeno or Heretic you come across. The music also goes a long way into getting you into the game. While I can't say any of the tracks were memorable, I can say that I often found myself lost in the carnage as the mix of rock and synth blasted in the background of the game. But look, I gotta be brutally honest about where I stand with this game. For every bit of fun I've had playing it, about 75% of that was reflected by how much not fun I had. The most glaring issue with Bolt Gun has to be the maps. Not just some of the most unmemorable I've ever played, maps are set up as a series of mazes with very little in the way of direction. Once you're done slaughtering all the enemies in your way, you often find yourself at a loss as to where to go next, as the game offers no hand to guide you, no mini-map or overview, forcing you to rely on your own sense of direction. Further complicated 
complicating things, there are points where the game won't let you progress until you found a color-coded key, complicating already confusing map layouts by integrating scavenger hunts into them. The player will often find themselves circling and scouring through the maps over and over until they found what they've missed. It is surprisingly easy to gloss over exits or pathways. At worst, it's actually quite disorienting to maneuver through the maps, and there have been times where I had found that I had unintentionally backtracked through them. Combat also gets stale at many points through the game. A distinct complaint I would give to it is how often it just respawns enemies. There will be times when you clear out a room or arena only for the game to just spawn in more enemies. And it just feels incredibly cheap. A player clears out a room and instead of just allowing them to progress through the map, you throw more enemies at them to create the illusion of more playtime content and challenge. I'm sorry, that really doesn't work here. Not to mention how often the game will just put a player in a cramped spot and just spam enemies at them ad nauseum. That's apparently what passes for a challenge in this game, that's what passes for level design, I guess. The boss types are also very underwhelming and unmemorable. For the most part, there's very little strategy to them, it's just a matter of of being able to evade their attacks, putting your cursor over them, and holding down the left click. At some points, I'd actually find myself standing in place, unloading my weapons onto them with little resistance or readjustment. Fighting them just really doesn't feel right because oftentimes you're not really doing much to his health bar. You feel as if you're doing something wrong. Is there a better way to maximize damage? Is there a weak spot or something? Well, no, it's just kind of how the game is. It just wants you to pump round after round into the boss until you've chipped away enough of its health for it to die. This makes boss fights incredibly unsatisfying. Now, bosses on their own don't really pose much of a challenge. To compensate for this, the game often reinforces them with lower tier enemies, so you'd think a reasonable strategy would be to just eliminate all the cannon fodder before putting all of your attention onto the boss. But in order to artificially create difficulty, the game will also respawn enemies in the boss fights. It was so annoying and I was so unwilling to put up with it that I found that the most sensible strategy was to just kill enough of the opposition to the point where they wouldn't be a problem, but not too much to the point where they They'd respawn and I'd have to do it all over again. And I guess there's nothing wrong with that in the grand scheme of things, it's just kind of weird that that's the strategy that results from this game's bizarre design choices, leaving enemies alive so you have a better chance of winning the level. Not even to mention that the game reuses bosses pretty often, hell the final boss fight is literally just marathoning all the bosses you fought up until that point, back to back. For that reason and many more, it really makes the game feel as though the developers stopped trying at a point, instead of creating new content by, well, actually creating content, they just took what they had and threw it at the player a few more times. Now that being said, my playtime clocked in at about 10 hours after completion, which I think is good for the price. As far as replayability goes, I'm sure there's an argument to be made for it. I'm sure there'll be people who replay the game over and over to memorize the maps and find the most efficient ways to beat it, but I don't really like the game enough to do that. But I may as well just throw it out there. I think the problem with this game is that instead of taking the best part of 90s game design and blending it with what people expect from a modern video game, they went all into making a game based on 90s design philosophies that are, at this point, outdated. I mean, look, I understand back then that memory was limited, so developers probably would make maps confusing and probably would reuse assets and make their games more difficult than they really needed to be. They just kind of wanted to extend longevity into the experience, and that was okay because video games weren't as accessible back then, so players had a game that they could replay and improve at. I think that's what they were going for, and I think they accomplished what they set out to do. That being said, the unwillingness to compromise the vision to recreate a game as if it were from the 90s or something like that, I think it does more to hinder the game's appeal than further it. But if that's what the developers really wanted their games to be, so be it, I guess. And that's why it's so weird for me to review this game. The foundations of a good media are definitely there, but at the end of the day, it's a case where the developer's vision and what I would say makes a good video game don't really align. If I'm gonna be good faith to this game, I think it was made for a specific group of people, one that I am clearly not in. For that reason, I'm giving this game a 6.5 out of 10. Now that being said, I would find it pretty easy to recommend the game. If you are into those retro boomer shooters, if the idea of slowly learning and memorizing maps and mastering the gameplay is something that interests you, I mean, this is the game to play. I'm not sure if there's any out there on the market that do it better. For everyone else, however, I struggle to really recommend it. I think the normies are looking for something a little more straightforward, something a little more reasonable for the modern era of game design, and I just don't think that's something that this game offers. But that's our review on Warhammer 40 thousand bolt gun. Now if you're into Warhammer, check out our review on Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sister. This is a Warhammer game in VR. Other than that, if you want to keep up to date with our game and movie reviews, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac Cheese to Jetavision, signing out. You all have a good one. We will ride.